I am Ra. I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Question 90.1 Questioner, could you first please give me the condition of the instrument? Answer, I am Ra. The physical complex energy deficit is somewhat increased by continued distortions towards pain. The vital energy levels are as previously stated, having fluctuated slightly between askings. Question 90.2 Questioner, could you tell me the situation with respect to our fourth and fifth density companions at this time? Answer, I am Ra. The fourth density league of companions accompanies your group. The fifth density friend, at this space-time nexus, works within its own density exclusively. Question 90.3 Questioner, by what means do these particular fourth density entities get from their origin to our position? Answer, I am Ra. The mechanism of calling has been previously explored. When the distortion which may be negatively connotated is affected, this calling occurs. In addition, the light of which we have spoken, emanating from attempts to be of service to others in a fairly clear and lucid sense, is another type of calling in that it represents that which requires balance by temptation. Thirdly, there have been certain avenues into the mind, body, spirit complexes of this group which have been made available by your fifth density friend. Question 90.4 Questioner, actually, the question that I intended was how do they get here? By what means of moving do they get here? Answer, I am Ra. In the mechanism of the calling the movement is as you would expect, that is, the entities are within your planetary influence and are, having come through the quarantine web, free to answer such calling. The temptations are offered by those negative entities of what you would call your inner planes. These, shall we say, dark angels have been impressed by the service to self path offered by those which have come through quarantine from days of old and these entities, much like your angelic presences of the positive nature, are ready to move in thought within the inner planes of this planetary influence working from time space to space time. The mechanism of the fifth density entity is from density to density and is magical in nature. The fourth density, of itself, is not capable of building the highway into the energy web. However, it is capable of using that which has been left intact. These entities are, again, the Orion entities of fourth density. Question 90.5 Questioner, you stated previously that fifth density entities bear a resemblance to those of us in third density on planet Earth but fourth density does not. Could you describe the fourth density entities and tell me why they do not resemble us? Answer, I am Ra. The description must be baited under the law of confusion. The cause for a variety of so-called physical vehicles is the remaining variety of heritages from second density physical vehicular forms. The process of what you call physical evolution continues to hold sway into fourth density. Only when the ways of wisdom have begun to refine the power of what you may loosely call thought is the form of the physical complex manifestation more nearly under the direction of the consciousness. Question 90.6 Questioner, if the population of this planet presently looks similar to fifth density entities I was wondering why this is. If I understand you correctly the process of evolution would normally be that of third density resembling that from which evolved in second density and refining it in fourth and then again in fifth density, becoming what the population of this looks like in the third density. It seems to me that this planet is ahead of itself by the way that its mind, body, spirit complex or body complex looks. What is the reason for this? Answer, I am Ra. Your query is based upon a misconception. Do you wish us to comment or do you wish to re-question? Question 90.7 Questioner, please comment on my misconception if that is possible. Answer, I am Ra. In fifth density the manifestation of the physical complex is more and more under the control of the conscious mind complex. Therefore, the fifth density entity may dissolve one manifestation and create another. Consequently, the choice of a fifth density entity or complex of entities wishing to communicate with your peoples will be to resemble your people's physical complex, chemical, yellow array vehicles. Question 90.8 Questioner, I see. 
Very roughly, if you were to move a third density entity from some other planet to this planet, what percentage of all of those within the knowledge of Ra would look enough like entities of Earth so that they would go unnoticed in a crowd? Answer, I am Ra. Perhaps 5%. Question 90.9. Questioner, then there is an extreme variation in the form of the physical vehicle in third density in the universe. I assume that this is also true of fourth density. Is this correct? Answer, I am Ra. This is so. We remind you that it is a great theoretical distance between demanding that the creatures of an infinite creation be unnoticeably similar to one's self and observing those signs which may be called human which denote the third density characteristics of self-consciousness, the grouping into pairs, societal groups, and races, and the further characteristic means of using self-consciousness to refine and search for the meaning of the milieu. Question 90.10 Questioner, within Ra's knowledge of the third density physical forms, what percentage would be similar enough to this planet's physical forms that we would assume the entities to be human even though they were a bit different? This would have to be very rough because of my definitions being very rough. Answer, I am Ra. This percentage is still small, perhaps 13 to 15 percent due to the capabilities of various second density life forms to carry out each necessary function for third density work. Thusly to be observed would be behavior indicating self-consciousness and purposeful interaction with the sentient ambience about the entity rather than those characteristics which familiarly connote to your peoples the humanity of your third density form. Question 90.11 Questioner, now in this line of questioning I am trying to link to the creations of various logwa and their original use of a system of archetypes in their creation and I apologize for a lack of efficiency in doing this but I find this somewhat difficult. For this particular logos in the beginning, prior to its creation of the first density, did the archetypical system which it had chosen include the forms that would evolve in third density or was this related to the archetypical concept at all? Answer, I am Ra. The choice of form is prior to the formation of the archetypical mind. As the logos creates its plan for evolution, then the chosen form is invested. Question 90.12. Questioner, was there a reason for choosing the forms that have evolved on this planet and, if so, what was it? Answer, I am Ra. We are not entirely sure why our logos and several neighboring logo of approximately the same space-time of flowering chose the bipedal, erect form of the second density apes to invest. It has been our supposition which we share with you as long as you are aware that this is mere opinion, that our Logos was interested in, shall we say, further intensifying the veiling process by offering to the third density form the near complete probability for the development of speech taking complete precedence over concept communication or telepathy. We also have the supposition that the so-called opposable thumb was looked upon as an excellent means of intensifying the veiling process so that rather than rediscovering the powers of the mind the third density entity would, by the form of its physical manifestation, be drawn to the making, holding, and using of physical tools. Question 90.13 Questioner I will guess that the system of archetypes then was devised to further extend these particular principles. Is this correct? Answer, I am Ra. The phrasing is faulty. However, it is correct that the images of the archetypical mind are the children of the third density physical manifestations of form of the Logos which has created the particular evolutionary opportunity. Question 90.14. Questioner, now, as I understand it the archetypes are the biases of a very fundamental nature that, under free will, generate the experiences of each entity. Is this correct? Answer, I am Ra. The archetypical mind is part of that mind which informs all experience. Please recall the definition of the archetypical mind as the repository of those refinements to the cosmic oral mind made by this particular Logos and peculiar only to this Logos. Thus it may be seen as one of the roots of mind, not the deepest but certainly the most informative in some ways. The other root of mind to be recalled is the tracial or planetary mind which also informs the conceptualizations of each entity to some degree. Question 90.15 Questioner, at what point in the evolutionary process does the archetypical mind first have effect upon the entity? Answer, I am Ra. 
at the point at which an entity, either by accident or design, reflects an archetype, the archetypical mind resonates. Thusly random activation of the archetypical resonances begins almost immediately in third density experience. The disciplined use of this tool of evolution comes far later in this process. Question 90.16 Questioner, what was the ultimate objective of this Logos in designing the archetypical mind as it did? Answer, I am Ra. Each Logos desires to create a more eloquent expression of experience of the Creator by the Creator. The archetypical mind is intended to heighten this ability to express the Creator in patterns more like the fanned peacock's tail, each facet of the Creator vivid, upright, and shining with articulated beauty.